Bork is a mod that aims to enhance the base game of Minecraft with the idea that anything added to Quark could also be added to the default game without compromising its gameplay style. So, let's begin. Every feature in Quark can be disabled and tweaked individually. When you load up the game, you'll see a Q button in your main menu. Clicking this button lets you configure the mod. You can tweak everything just your way or even disable things you don't like. Quark adds features both in-game and to the Minecraft client itself. We'll start with the features added to the client. Pressing the rebindable key will toggle auto walk until either you press it again or start walking manually. While in auto walk, auto jump is also enabled. This is great for people who want a break from holding W all day. Buckets can now display variants of mobs like crabs, axolotls, and tropical fish. Pressing F12 will open camera mode. In this mode, you can take enhanced screenshots by using 20 image filters and combining them with borders and overlays. You can even enable grid lines such as the rule of thirds or the golden ratio to help you take a perfect image. A filter button will now appear on the top right of chests that you open. When you click it, a tab with a search bar will pop up, where you can type and filter items in the chest by your query. Items that don't match will be darkened. You can also search for enchantment and potion names or wrap the search in quotes to match entire names. While wearing an elytra, it will display on the left side of the armor bar. It will replace an armor slot and push the rest of the armor to the right. Biome colors are still respected but are greener now. There's also config options to enable alpha style grass which gives you the Minecraft alpha vibe or to manually set the grass color. You can also manually adjust the color balance in the config menu. A few tooltips are changed around the place with visual elements. Tools and armor have their attributes displayed with icons. Food shows how much it'll heal with icons and will show when it'll give negative effects. Shulker boxes now show their contents visually. Maps display in the tooltip and enchanted books show which items they can be applied to. The pick block function can now select blocks at any distance in your Minecraft world. A crafting queue system is added to help when crafting recipes involving multiple steps. If you try to craft an item using the recipe book but don't have all necessary ingredients, you can now right click the created ghost items to instead bring up the recipe for that item. The item you were previously trying to craft will now be put into a crafting queue which shows up above the crafting result. Upon crafting the current item, the previous item in the queue is loaded again. Pressing mouse 4 by default will try to find a back or done or cancel button in your current GUI and click it. This makes the button work as a back button like in most programs. Candles placed and lit on soul sand or soul soil will now emit soul flames, just like how fire does. A small interface addition shows up next to the hotbar when items are used or armor takes damage. This shows how many items or blocks you have left or how the status of your armor is. Curses now have added effects giving them some usefulness. Pumpkins with curse of vanishing will not show the pumpkin overlay when worn. Player heads with curse of binding will show the player model of its owner on an armor stand. Cows, pigs, and chickens will now have randomized textures from a small pool of variants. Additionally, some animals may rarely show up with a special variant. Minecarts will now produce a lot less sound when their rails are placed onto wool blocks. And that's all of the client features added, now we'll take a look at some of the management features added. When a tool breaks on your hotbar, it will be restocked by other items of the same type taken from your inventory. It will prioritize tools with similar enchantments such as Silk Touch. Two new buttons are added to chests, insert and extract. The insert button will try to put every item in your inventory, not in your hotbar, inside the chest. The extract button will try to pull every item from the chest into your inventory. If you hold shift while pressing these buttons, they'll only move items that are on the other side. 
for example if your chest has dirt and stone and you have stone and sand in your inventory insert with shift held will only move the stone a few new ways to interact with items in your inventory have been added while holding an item in your cursor you can right click on top of a non-full shulker box to add the item to it alternatively you can also right click the shulker box on that item right clicking an armor item in an inventory will swap it for whatever armor you're currently holding items can now be right clicked onto a lava bucket to destroy them forever Shulker boxes and items that are immune to fire cannot be destroyed this way. Pressing the Z key by default will show your entire inventory above your hotbar. You can then press 1, 2 or 3 to switch to that respective inventory row with your hotbar. Pressing Z again will hide the three additional rows with no change. A sort button is added to the inventory screen and chests. Pressing this button sorts your inventory except your hotbar. Sorting is done via a category system in which items are placed based on what category they fit in. Food, tool, armor, blocks, etc. Each category also has its own sorting rules. For example, food will get sorted based on which is more filling. Tools will get sorted based on which one is the best or has more durability. Potions and tipped arrows will be sorted based on their effects. Pressing shift and whatever your chat keybind is while looking at an item in an inventory links that item to the chat. This lets other players hover over it to check it out. Shift right clicking an armor stand will swap its armor set for whatever armor set you are currently wearing. Now we'll move on to some of the tweaks added by the mod. Armor stands placed by the armor stand item will have arms. You may also give them items. Every single recipe is unlocked and displayed in the recipe book as soon as you load a world. If new recipes are added to the game via new mods added or updated, those will be unlocked when you get back in. Firework rockets are able to be used to start Elytra flying, even if you're not currently in that state. All you have to do is right click a firework rocket while wearing an elytra and you'll be shot up into the sky. When flying using an elytra over a campfire with a hay bale under it, the player will be propelled upwards slightly. Soul campfires will have the opposite effect, pulling you quickly towards the ground. Compasses will now work in the nether and in the end. In the nether, a compass will point to the portal you entered from, provided you had it on you when you went into the nether. In the end, a compass will point to the overworld portal. Fan coral can now be placed on top of cacti. The moisture within the cacti will keep the coral alive. Double doors open together when right-clicked now. When an ender dragon that was spawned by the player is killed, it will drop a dragon scale. The scale can be combined with an elytra to mold it, creating a new one. The old elytra stays behind untouched. Item frames can be dyed similar to leather armor. This works for any combination of dyes. In the corner of the chat menu, there's a button to open an emote panel with 12 different emotes your character can do. Each emote is also assigned a key binding. Pressing that key will do the emote without you having to open the chat menu. By default, all emo keybinds are unset and they must be set manually. Ladders are slightly tweaked to improve your laddering experience. Right clicking a ladder with another one will place it, allowing you to drop ladders down without risking falling to your death. When on a ladder, looking down will make you slide down the ladder very quickly. Golden tools will come with a baked in fortune 2 effect. This does not stack with the enchantments, but can be suspended by an enchantment more powerful than level 2. Golden swords will have looting too instead. Glass now drops shards, and crafting them in a 2x2 two two grid creates a glass block back. The shards act like glowstone dust in which fortune will let you get more, and silk touch will just drop the block. Stained glass will naturally drop shards of the respective type. If you decide to mix multiple types of stained shards, you'll end up with a new block called Dirty Glass. Chickens can now be picked up by right-clicking on them. This allows you to carry the chicken on your head, which can be taken off by right-clicking anywhere. This gives you the ability to fall slower by gliding using the chicken. Breaking grass or crops with a hoe will break a 3x3 of them. A diamond hoe will break a 5x5 instead. If you put fortune on the hoe, it'll also apply that effect to everything it breaks. 
Pressing the K key by default will lock a rotation and optionally a block half if you're looking at a block. Any further blocks placed are changed to that direction, regardless of how you are facing when placing them. This can be very useful for building with blocks that have awkward rotation methods such as stairs or pistons. To unlock the rotation, press the key again while looking in the same direction you locked in. Maps can now be washed in a cauldron, turning them back into blank maps. The loom is now able to handle 16 different patterns at once, increased from 6. Anvils will no longer be damaged from cosmetic uses such as renaming or applying runes. You can now pat dogs, sneak click them with an empty hand to perform this glorious act. Pigs will now have litters of piglets instead of just one when bred. Litter sizes can range from 2 to 3, but if you use a golden carrot instead of normal carrots, this allows up to 5 pigs in one litter. Feeding a baby animal a poisonous potato has a chance to poison it for a few seconds, and a baby animal that has been poisoned by this method will never grow into an adult. Reach around placing allows you to place blocks behind the block you're looking at. This can be done either vertically or horizontally, provided you wouldn't be placing a block given normal rules. Spore blossoms can be grown by using bone meal on them, wherein there will be a 20% chance to drop another spore blossom. Rabbit fall damage is now calculated 5 blocks lower than most mobs, allowing them to drop from higher jumps without taking damage. Slimes will take no fall damage. Right clicking on a scaffold with a block will attempt to place the block at the end of the scaffold chain. By default it'll turn direction once so it can build blocks horizontally if you extend scaffolds that way. Shulker boxes can be created by holding a shulker shell in both hands and shift right clicking a chest. Right clicking a crop will harvest it and replant it. If you have hoe harvesting enabled you can also harvest a large area at once which can be changed in the config. Slabs can be recombined into blocks in a shapeless recipe. When a large slime dies on magma blocks, the slime spawned will be turned into magma cubes. Named snow golems equipped with a pumpkin will drop a player head with the same name as theirs if they are killed by a witch. Sponges can be placed directly onto water without needing to place them on the side of a block. Horses will now swim in water while being ridden instead of sinking and force dismounting their rider. A large assortment of new utility recipes are added to the game, as well as a few tweaks that help crafting in general. For example, 8 logs can be crafted directly into 4 chests, wool of any colour can be dyed, and stone tools can be crafted with any type of stone. Vexes will now die when the evoker who spawned them is killed. Holding an emerald block causes nearby villagers to follow the player, much like animals do for food items. Zombie villagers will now be guaranteed to be spawned when a villager is killed by a zombie in normal mode. This is the default behavior in hard mode and usually only has a chance of happening on normal mode. Now moving on to the tools added by the mod. Right clicking a block will bind the abacus to it. After that it will count the distance between the targeted block and hovered block measured along right angles. The abacus will count up to 48 blocks, drawing an outline of the counted blocks. The texture of the item will change according to how many blocks are counted. Right click again to unbind the abacus. A variety of 8 discs that add a wide range of ambient sound have been added to the game. When you insert them into a jukebox, they loop infinitely and do not display on the UI when they are played. The following sounds are available. Water droplets, ocean waves, rainy mood, heavy wind, soothing cinders, tiktok, cricket song, and packed venue. Ambience discs are acquired when a skeleton kills a spider. Ancient tomes are a rare loot item from dungeons and stronghold libraries, being usable to upgrade enchantments. A netherite pickaxe with efficiency 6 and haste 2 can insta-mine deep slate. Cluster variants of corundum, which we'll look at later, can be used to redirect beacon beams and change their colour. Tinted glass can also be used to dim the beam. Note that for a beacon to function, the final segment must always face upwards towards the sky. Using a glass bottle at the cloud levels 192 to 196 by default 
will get you a bottle cloud. The bottle cloud can be right clicked to produce a block floating in midair in front of you. The cloud block disappears after a few seconds but you can right click it with any other block to replace the two. The cloud will go back in the bottle when you do this. Endermosh is a new music disc that can be found in end cities. Cartographer villagers will now sell Pathfinder quills which over time can be used to generate Pathfinder maps. New maps that will take you to certain biomes. The Pickerang is a boomerang pickaxe. When you throw it, it breaks whatever it hits and comes back to you with the drops. The Pickerang is crafted with a heart of diamond which is dropped from stonelings which we'll look at later and can be enchanted with efficiency, unbreaking, fortune, silk touch and piercing. Runic etching, smithing templates are a rare loot item from dungeons, temples and nether fortresses. They can be duplicated with corundum and cobblestone. These smithing templates can be used on any enchanted item and combined with a die can change the color of any enchantment glint on said item. They can also be applied with no dye to remove the glint or applied with blaze powder to gain a rainbow effect. The seed pouch is a new utility item that can store up to 10 stacks of any type of seed in it. To add seeds to the pouch, grab the seeds you want to add in your inventory and right click it onto the pouch. You can then right click the pouch to take a stack of seeds out. There's also a small set of utility features included. Right clicking the pouch onto a farmable soil will plant the seed. Shift right clicking plants a 3x3. Setting a skeleton skull, zombie head or creeper head over a fence will create a skull pike. Nearby monsters in a 5 block range and within sightline will notice it and run away in cowardice. Right clicking a tiny slime with a bucket puts it in there. It remains quiet but will start jumping inside the bucket if you find yourself in a slime chunk. The slime can also be deployed back into the world by right clicking on a block. You can also use it as a replacement for slime balls. Torch arrows can be crafted with a normal torch and arrow. They will set entities on fire or place a torch where they land. A trowel tool can be crafted with iron and sticks. The trowel when right clicked will place a random block from your hotbar, making it useful for building ruins or paths. Next we'll be looking at the automation features of the mod. Chains can now connect blocks together when the piston moves them. The chute is a new automation block. Items can be inserted into it via automation, by a hopper or a dropper, etc. And any items inserted are instantly dropped under it. The chute can be disabled with a redstone signal or by placing a block under it. The chute can drop items through hollow logs. Dispensers are now allowed to place blocks in the world. Any blocks that already had a placement behavior like TNT are ignored. The blocks are rotated so they're placed forward from the dispenser. Note that crops such as wheat seeds or potatoes also count in this. The Ender Watcher is a new redstone input block. It emits a redstone signal if a player is looking directly at it. The feeding trough is a new block you can craft with some planks and fence gates. When right clicked a menu will pop up where you can put food inside. Nearby animals will flock to the trough to eat the food within. This works just as if a player had fed the animal but with a few differences. There's a chance the animal will need more than one bit of food to get into love mode. Animals bred with the trough will not produce any XP. If there's more than 32 animals in a 10 block radius the animals will eat but never enter love mode. Gravisand is a new sand variant, crafted with sand and an ender pearl. Gravisand will not fall unless primed with redstone. However, if Gravisand receives a signal and cannot fall, it'll instead float up. Pistons pushing an iron rod will have it work as a sort of drill. It breaks any blocks in front in the direction the rod is facing. These can break anything the piston can push. Combining a wooden button with either an iron ingot or a gold ingot creates a button of that type. Drawing influence from weighted pressure plates, gold buttons emit a very short pulse of two redstone ticks 
whereas iron buttons emit a very long pulse of 5 seconds. Pressure plates made with obsidian will only trigger when players walk over them. Pistons are allowed to move tile entities. These are blocks with extra data attached like chests or furnaces. And attempting to move a block to an invalid position will cause it to break and drop its contents. Note that some blocks such as monster spawners can be moved this way. The randomizer is a new redstone component and it is crafted the same way as a comparator but with prismarine crystals. When given a redstone signal from the back, it'll randomly enable either the left or the right output. Next up is the world features. These can be found generated naturally in your world. Ashen wood is a new type of wood which can be obtained from ashen trees. Ashen trees do not generate naturally. Instead, ashen saplings can be dug up by sniffers. Ashen trees will also drop a new food item, that being the enchanted fruit. Eating this fruit will give you some experience. Azalea trees will now grow with a new wood type. Azalea wood can be used for all normal wood recipes, including new green variants for most wooden blocks. Uncommon patches of new chorus weeds and chorus twist blocks will now spawn on the outer end. These blocks may look unassuming but will have all sorts of ender properties. They randomly teleport every now and then and when doing so have a tiny chance to reproduce. When trampled by a living being that isn't an enderman or an endermite, they'll always teleport. This has a tiny chance to spawn an endermite. When water is adjacent to them, they'll try to teleport out of the west situation. Bone meal can be used to force the block to teleport with a guaranteed chance of reproducing itself. Corundum crystals are a fancy semi-transparent light emitting block that spawn in clusters above deep slate in any biome that isn't an ocean. Corundum can also be turned into pain variants and crafted into colored runes. If placed deep underground, they'll grow up to four blocks tall and will emit some particles to let you know that they're growing. This growth can be prevented by using honeycomb to wax them with the wax being removable with an axe. Rarely in forests and plains, you may find little flower circles. Should you dig up in the center, you'll find some emeralds or diamonds. The Glimmering Weald is a new underground biome found beneath Y equals zero, full of unique fungal vegetation. This biome contains a new form of mushroom, glowing mushrooms which can be grown on deep slate. There is also a larger concentration of lapis and more common spawning of stonelings and glow squid. Monster boxes are new blocks you may find randomly scattered around caves deep underground. When you get near one, it'll start spawning a few mobs and then break. The activation range can be configured. Mobs that you kill that are spawned from one of these get an extra loot table tacked onto them, including cool rare items like infested blocks, ores and even a monster box. Obsidian spikes will now decorate the nether's lava floors. Rarely you may find a big one with a light in the top. If you choose to climb it, you'll be treated with a loot chest and a blaze spawner under it. Four new stone types are added to the world. There's shale, myelite, limestone and jasper. Most of these generate in the overworld. Myelite generates in the end and is immune to the dragon. Myolite also has a slight color tinting property based on its position, shifting between several hues of purple. No lava pockets will spawn in the nether now. This only applies to the hidden lava pockets encased in netherrack. Permafrost is a new block that spawns together with packed ice underground towards the layers of frozen peaks biomes. The permafrost blocks can be turned into bricks and used for slabs, stairs and walls. Quarks, variant stone types such as limestone, jasper and shale generate in rare massive clusters rather than small nodes that dot the landscape. Spiral spires are new uncommon set pieces that spawn in the outer end. Atop these large obsidian spires you'll find new myelite crystal blocks arranged in a spiral. Myelite crystals can be used as a decoration or to create myelite viaducts, a way to allow enderpearls to be used to phase through blocks. Trumpet trees are a new uncommon specimen in esoteric colors that dot your landscape. 
Each color of tree will spawn in different types of biomes. The trees come with their own wood type and leaves. Trumpet wood can be used for all normal wood recipes with a strong red tint. Now for the features added to the building element of the game. Celebratory lamps are new lamp blocks that can be crafted with your block of choice, glass and a torch. They come in stone and stone brick variants and emit a light level of 15. A bunch of blocks can now be crafted into compressed variants. Charcoal can be crafted into a block of charcoal which will burn forever. Blaze rods and powder can be crafted into a blaze lantern, it will also burn forever. Leather can be crafted into bonded leather. These are just a few examples. Duskbound blocks are purple looking blocks made from purple and obsidian, fully featured with stair, slab and wall variants, also including duskbound lamps made with duskbound blocks and ender pearls. If you combine some iron ingots and glass, you get yourself some fancy framed glass. You can also craft panes with these. You can now craft a glass item frame. Glass item frames will hide the frame around them when you put something in them. So you can have a display that only shows the item. Gold bars are just like iron bars, but they're just made from gold. Hedges can be crafted using an overworld log and the respective leaf type. They connect to each other like fences and have the same bounding box. You can even put flowers on them. Hollow logs can be crafted with four of their respective logs. You can sneak next to a horizontal hollow log to climb inside. You can also climb the inside of a vertical hollow log like a ladder. Industrial style decoration can now be made using iron. Iron plates can be crafted using iron ingots. You can also craft rusty iron plates using a water bucket as well. They can further be crafted into variants such as stairs and pillars. You can also make iron ladders using iron nuggets. They work like normal ladders but they fit the industrial style. The iron grate is a cool new block with multiple uses. Animals are afraid of walking on it and will never do it, whereas items will just fall through the gaps. Players, monsters and other entities will just walk through it normally. Grates can be crawled under, similarly to hollow logs. Japanese style decoration can now be made with paper, bamboo and sticks. Paper walls come in three variants, normal, big and decorated. Paper lanterns come in normal and decorated variants. Bamboo mats are a carpet sized block crafted using bamboo and sticks. It can also be crafted into a full block sized version. Leaf carpet can now be made with all types of leaves in the same recipe as wool carpet. It can be harvested by hand and has no collision box. Midori blocks are a green counterpart to purple. These are made with moss paste with the same recipes as the purple blocks. Moss paste is a new item that is obtained by smelting moss in a furnace. New brick variants are added for a few blocks. There are sandstone bricks, cobblestone bricks, blackstone bricks, dirt bricks, netherrack bricks, and blue nether bricks. Additionally, all of these come in slab, stairs, and wall variants. There are a few new mud building blocks. This includes mud brick lattice, mud brick pillar, and carved mud brick. 17 new blocks can now be added into flower pots. Brick, chisel brick and pillar variants are available for all types of stone added by vanilla and by quark. The brick types come in slab, stair and wall variants and the chisel brick types look different for each type of stone. A fence gate made of nether bricks is crafted with nether brick blocks in the place of planks and nether brick fences in the place of sticks. The recipe outputs too. Rainbow lamps can be made of corundum by default and powered by redstone. They will color beacons while they are powered. Raw ore blocks can be crafted into raw ore bricks. These bricks can still be crafted back into 9 raw ore. Rope coils can be crafted using string. This new block can be placed on the bottom face of a block by players and dispensers and drop down by right clicking on the placed rope block Shift right clicking or right clicking with a non rope item will pull the rope up. If a block is at the end of the rope, it'll drop down and be pulled up alongside it. Lastly, as you'd expect, players can climb the rope as if it was a ladder. The tip of a vine can now be right clicked with shears. When doing so, the vine will no longer be able to grow. Shingles are tile style blocks for terracotta and all of its color variants. They can all be turned into stairs and slabs. Soul sand can now be turned into soul sandstone. All recipes are as expected. 
So the sandstone can be turned into stairs, slabs and walls. Stools can be created the same way you'd make a bed but using slabs instead of full wood blocks. As you can expect, you can sit on them. Dirty stone is a hard stone block made with 4 stone and 4 cobblestone. It outputs 4. The block has the furnace texture and cannot be moved by pistons. Thatch is created via a 2x2 of wheat. It can be used for stairs and slabs or turned back into 4 wheat. You can now make bookshelves out of all wood types. All of these bookshelves work for the enchanting table too. Chests can be made of all the different wood types. Each one is styled differently for the type of wood you use. To get the vanilla chest, you can craft a chest with more than one wood type or woods added by other mods. Furnaces crafted from deep slate or blackstone have new textures. Additionally, blackstone furnaces can emit soul fire particles if they are placed over a block that can light up with soul fire. Ladders can be made from all wood types. To compensate for the fact that sticks do not come in different wood types, the recipes for ladders is changed to have a single plank of the corresponding wood type in the center. Putting three wooden planks in a vertical line creates three vertical wooden planks. Doing the same reverts it. Vertical slabs exist for every vanilla and quark block that has a slab and can be crafted by placing three of the respective slab in a column. Wooden posts can be crafted with logs or stripped logs. These are slim log style blocks you can lay down vertically or horizontally. Chains and lanterns can also connect to them. And finally, there are also 7 mobs added by the mod. Crabs are cute new animals that spawn in beaches. They walk sideways and will pinch you if you get too close. If you kill one, they might drop crab legs or crab shells. Crabs can be bucketed like axolotls. Crabs aren't hurt by cacti or berry bushes. Crab legs can be cooked and eaten. Crab shells can be brewed into a potion of resilience, while under its effect you will gain additional knockback resistance. Crabs can be bred with wheat, chicken or any type of fish, and they are also known to enjoy music. Forgotten are new rare skeleton variants that spawn deep underground and in complete darkness. They will randomly replace normal skeleton spawns. These are forgotten hosts of old explorers, making them apt at combat with both a bow and a sword, which always comes randomly enchanted. Their bows are tipped with blindness arrows and when you're blinded, they'll charge at you with their sword, switching back to the bow once the effect ends. On death, they'll drop their hat. Wearing an explorer's hat increases your maximum reach distance by two blocks and also improves your luck while fishing. Foxhounds are new hostile mobs that spawn in the nether. These fierce doggos will attack you and set you on fire. If you're brave enough, drink a fire resistance potion and feed them some coal to tame them. Tamed foxhounds work just like regular wolves, but with a few extra tidbits. They'll sleep on hot blocks like magma. If put on top of a furnace, they'll make the furnace go faster. If one spawns in a soul sand valley, you'll get one with blue soul fire particles and a blue texture. Ortoises are a new neutral mob that spawn deep underground and in complete darkness. When an ortois spawns, it'll come with a random type of ore. Coal, copper, iron, lapis or redstone. You may attack the ortois with a pickaxe to have it drop that ore. If you hit an ortois without a pickaxe, or when it has no ore, It'll emit a shockwave attack, this will damage any non ortois entities around and redirect their aggro to you. With enough care, it's possible to carry an ortois home and feed it so it grows more ores. The Sheba is a new friendly dog that spawns in mountain biomes. They can be tamed and interacted with in the same way as a wolf, but will in addition also fetch any arrows or tridents after they land and bring them back to you, as long as they are not sitting. If you are holding a torch, they will also look for dark spots and get mad at them so you know where to light up next. They'll also lay down if you're having them sit on a bed. Stonelings are a new passive mob that spawn in the deep underground and in complete darkness. These little stone fairies will spawn in carrying an item and will get startled if you get too close to them without sneaking and holding a glow shroom to tempt them. 
If startled, they'll run away from you and eventually poof out of existence. If you manage to kill one, you'll get the item it's carrying, as well as a heart of diamond. Wraiths are a new neutral mob that spawn in the Soul Sand Valley. They are the lost souls of different mobs, and as such, their sounds are a low-pitched version of normal mob sounds. They attack like a normal zombie, they inflict slowness and jump back upon dealing damage. Upon their death, they'll drop a soul bead. Right clicking the soul bead will release the soul trap within, which will fly in the direction of the nearest nether fortress. And that will do it for the cork mod, as you can tell it's a super detailed and expansive mod that could pretty much serve as its own mod pack. It complements vanilla perfectly and the best part is that if you don't want a feature, you can simply just toggle it off. The mod is available to download down in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care.